And this is we have what we call power statements and driving questions. And that's the lawyer in me. But he's going to go through more of this in detail. I, I, if I do this, you'll just shoot me. I can't go through all the nuts and bolts. But he'll say, I'll say, so, so tell me, garden variety, seven-figure tax problem with one of your land developers. What did you do? I'm shutting up right there. Because I want to know, does he represent the demographic? Now, if I just go, hey, dude, you got any big clients? You know? <laughs> Some big ones? How big? How big? Big? Like big? How big? That's, that's what every other advisor does in the country. So I'm not asking that way. I'm not saying, so tell me. This is an interview wrapped up in a conversation. They don't even know they're being interviewed. They don't know what's happening. You've thrown them off balance from the very beginning. This is not what they expected, which is when you get in. So now I'm like, so tell me, garden variety, seven figure tax problem with one of your, your real estate developer clients. What'd you do? How'd you handle it? And then shut up. That's a driving question. Now shut up and listen. And, oh, well, you know, um, he might say, well, I don't have seven figure tax problems. Okay, well, good. You must be really good then. <laughs> None of your clients have seven figure tax problems. And then I pause long enough for him to say, oh, no, I don't have any big clients like that. Or I pause long enough for him to say, yeah, I am really good. Good. So you're high six figures. Tell me about the guys that are paying you know, high six figures in taxes. What did you do? Shut up. Um, I don't have any high six figure tax problems. Okay, mid six figures. Just tell me, how does the process work? How do you, how do you add value to your client situation? Shut up. Let him tell you. And then he'll tell you. Well, you know, we, uh, we looked at it, and it's always the same thing, the usual suspects. Oh, we added uh, the wife to the 401k plan. We put in a defined benefit plan, and, um, and we did great things. And I'll go, okay, so um, they were paying, what, 700000 in taxes? Yeah, and you did the defined benefit plan, and you added the wife to the 401k. And so what did that result in? Uh, what were you, 15000 by adding wife to the 401k? And, but maybe, what, 150 grand in the DB plan? <coughs> and he's gonna go, yeah, you know, I'll let him tell me. I'll, draw, I'll push him. So I'm gonna say, so at the end of the day, you saved him how much in taxes? Mm, 110 grand. And they were paying almost 800? Mm -hmm. Did they invite you over for Christmas dinner because of that? You don't think you can say this, but they already know. They already know that there is, what they did was junk. They already know that they didn't do anything special. And I'll, and I'll be laughing, I'll say, I, look, I get it, I get it, you did what you could. He goes, no, I had one CPA I said that, he goes, no, they gave me peanuts. And I said, really? He goes, no, really, peanuts, a tub of peanuts, that's what I got. I'm like, really, I go, I go, and? He goes, and I'm still eating them. I'm like, okay, but that's it. I said, I get it, I get it, it's tough, what are you gonna do? 700 grand, 800 grand in taxes, to find benefit plan, the 401k, you did the, you, the usual suspect, you did what you could, and you're there. It's most CPAs, some of you guys don't do anything. At least you did something. Hats off. Okay, and that's where now I'm done with the trunk. Now I'm getting serious. Okay, because now what have I figured out? I figured out, okay, he represents the demographic. He's got people paying, you know, high six figures in taxes. That's pretty good. Working on guys that have six figures. If, if he's telling me that, that he's got guys that are paying 700, he might only has people that pay seven figures as well. We just haven't got there yet. We haven't had that level of trust yet. So now my question becomes simple. If you think you're rolling well enough, Remember, there's four, two types of CPAs and two subsets. So there's four individuals that are CPAs in the country. I am the guy because A, I'm Superman, and I do everything in-house. Or B, I am the guy that my clients listen to because I got a group of guys that are good, that help me do it. That's the only two options on that side of the tree. Or the other side is, I'm not the guy. By design, I just want to do tax returns, that's one. Or I'm not the guy because I'm not comfortable. Um, I, I, I'm uncomfortable. I don't like the situation, and I wish I could do more, but I don't. That's it. I'm not the guy, or I am the guy, and there's two reasons on each side. And that's the only type of people you're ever going to meet. And 90% of the people you sit down with are, I am the guy because I have a group of guys that are good, period. 